Hello, dear viewers. Welcome to Airy TV English News Broadcast with me, Bersa Betakhla. These are the major headlines for today. Activity assessment of the European branch of the National Union of Eritrean Women. Seminar on ensuring mother and child health in Afabit subzone. India says China is trying to change status quo on disputed border. And Uganda's president accuses Europe of hypocrisy on its climate and energy policy. On your local news, the European branch of the National Union of Eritrean Women organized activity assessment virtual meeting as well as on implementation of the Chartered Art Development Programs for 2023. The meeting was attended by representatives of the Union from Denmark, France, Germany, the Netherlands, Italy, the UK, Norway, Sweden and Switzerland. The participants held extensive discussion on the report presented by Ms. Negusti Tsegai, chairperson of the Union branch, and called for reinforced participation for preserving strengthens and address shortcomings. The participants also expressed commitment to strengthen organizational capacity and participation in the national affairs. Seminar on ensuring health of mothers during pregnancy and delivery in general and that of mothers and children in particular was conducted in Noro Ansa administrative area of Abbas Sabzon on 10 December. Mr. Zedengil Gorgorios, head of community and family health at the Minister of Health branch in the Northern Red Sea region, said that in the past three years, pregnant women from eight villages in the subzones have lost their lives during delivery and that was due to the lack of seeking pre- and postnatal treatment as well as delivery at home. Indicating that village health committees have been established to encourage pregnant women to deliver at health facilities and conduct follow-up on health of the mothers and children, Mr. Musa Nur Hussein, head of health productivity program, called for reinforced efforts for better outcome. The participants on their part conducted extensive discussion on the issues raised at the meeting and adopted various recommendations, including for sustainable follow-up with a view to control delivery at home, construction of waiting room for pregnant women, women, sustainable awareness raising activities, among others. Mr. Mohammed Nur Rajib, administrator of Afabis Sabzon, on his part called for active participation of area administrators and managing directors, as well as mother and child health committees in the effort to encourage women deliver at health facilities. On your last local report, the Ministry of Labor and Social Welfare branch in the sunny subzone reported that commendable rehabilitation activity has been carried out in the subzone. Mr. Hab Yosef, head of branch office, said that 482 disadvantaged citizens, women-led foster families, as well as war disabled veterans have been rehabilitated with cards. Mr. Hab went on to say that school material support has been provided to disadvantaged students, financial support for buying nutritious food has been extended to citizens living with HIV AIDS and foster families and disadvantaged women have been rehabilitated with livestock worth 10,000 nafa each. Mr. Hub said that the office branch is conducting regular follow-up on the condition of rehabilitated citizens and so far they are in good condition. Commending the administrations at all levels in the effort to identify disadvantaged citizens in their areas, Ms. Dahab called on the subzone administration and partners for reinforced participation in the effort. Coming up with international news, dear viewers, after the short break. Welcome back. India has accused China of trying to unilaterally change the status quo on the disputed Himalayan border. After clashes last week in the Tuan sector of India's northeastern state of Arunachal Pradesh, the line of actual control is the de facto border separating Chinese and Indian-held territories from Ladakh in the west to India's eastern state of Arunachal Pradesh, which China claims in its entirety. India and China fought a war over the border in 1962. Chinese foreign Ministry spokesman Wang Wenbin said the situation at the India-China border was generally stable. Last week's fight was the first between the two countries since deadly clashes in June 2020 when India and Chinese troops were involved in hand-to-hand -hand combat in the Gawam Valley of Ladakh. 
On today's last report, Uganda's veteran president Yoweri Museveni accused Europe on Wednesday of brazen double standards towards Africa and its climate and energy policies. He lashed out at Europe's return to coal-fired power plants in the face of the energy crisis triggered by the war in Ukraine, while at the same time telling African nations not to use fossil fuels. We will not accept one rule for them and another rule for us, Museveni wrote in a blog published Wednesday that coincides with the UN's COP27 climate summit taking place in the Egyptian resort of Sharm el-Sheikh. Europe's failure to meet its climate goals should not be Africa's problem, he also added. The UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change in February warned that tens of millions of Africans face a future marked by drought, disease and displacement due to global heating. Africa's carbon footprint, on the other hand, is the lowest of any continent, accounting for around 3% of global carbon dioxide emissions. You're still watching us on Airy TV, dear viewers, and now recap of today's major headlines. Activity assessment of the European branch of the National Union of Eritrean Women. Seminar on ensuring mother and child health in of other subzone. India says China is trying to change status quo on disputed border. And Uganda's president accuses Europe of hypocrisy on its climate and energy policy. Dear viewers, that was it for today. Thanks for watching and have a good one.